Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here from WhatCulture.com and today it's time to talk about the one, the only, Vince McMahon. For you see, when you think of wrestling, chances are you think of his beefy, bar-biting face and his absolutely rock-gargling voice. After all, he's responsible for so much that we love about wrestling, but unfortunately, he is also responsible for a lot of things that we hate about sports entertainment. So you know what? Today, let's take a look at the fingers in the pie that he then threw at Kevin Owens as we detail some of the times that he just couldn't stop ruining a good thing. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 wrestling matches that Vince McMahon ruined. Number 10. Asuka vs. Sasha Banks – The Horror Show at Extreme rules. A case of great simply not being enough, a dream pay-per-view meeting threw up some nightmarish moments when Bailey randomly assumed the role of a referee in order to hand Asuka's Raw Women's Championship over to Sasha Banks. Destined to be a terrific match laden with plots centered around the delicate relationship between Bailey and Sasha Banks, the entire story took a left turn when McMahon allegedly insisted on getting the red brand's belt onto the boss. It came with the caveat that the Empress of Tomorrow be protected because they're system is horribly, horribly broken, and thus a finish played out in which the role models slapped on a referee's shirt so that the heels could steal the belt. A steaming turd of a conclusion that derailed the contest and almost put a bullet in about four months' worth of work between the heels. It spoke to the quality of all three that they were able to escape this just about unscathed, not least when they had to endure even more bullshit the next night, as number 9, Asuka vs Sasha Banks, the post-extreme rules Monday Night Raw. Another tip-top match with a topsy-turvy ending, Sasha Banks and Asuka's work was yet again undone by a finish designed to do one thing whilst pathetically trying to do another. After both were bollocked by women's wrestling overlord and final boss Stephanie McMahon, just to remind everybody to be afraid of the looming authority figures at the time, they had another total banger brutalized by a piss-poor figure. Finish. McMahon had determined that the disputed title would be decided on the show, but behind the scenes, her father was in no mood to offer a clean finish or conclusion to the mess that he had made. This was marginally cuter than the aptly named horror show, as a soon-to-depart Kyrie Zane was battered by Bailey backstage, forcing Asuka to abandon the match to make the save. Doesn't that make the babyface a bit stupid and quasi-babyface Banks a paper champion, you, the casual viewer, might ask? And yes is the answer to that, but you've already switched over like the millions of others finding something else to watch. Number 8. Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels Survivor Series 1997 you know what, this had to be included. Yes, there's no new ground to cover on the final seconds of this era-defining battle, and yes, the aftermath had ramifications that changed the entire industry, but time isn't particularly kind to the brawl thanks to the endless conversations on this conclusion. It's worth a look before Vince McMahon simultaneously sows the seeds for his new gimmick and shows his true self with this screw job. After several singles matches that fell a little below the high expectations set for the two best in-ring workers in the company's history, Montreal was the destination for the fight that they've been itching to have. It is a staggeringly professional effort all told. The pair look like they're beating the f out of each other, meaning that both were selling to make it look as such. That same give and take was missing at WrestleMania 12 and absent, at least on one side, behind the scenes for about two years before they managed to get it all out of their system on camera. The finish didn't just break Brett's heart, it destroyed another of his works of art. Number 7. Seth Rollins vs The Fiend – Hell in a Cell 2019 have you goddamn seen this match? I mean, it has potentially cursed the gimmick forever. Because it didn't even get a finish. Wrapping one's head around how the company's most definitive stipulation has now been swallowed whole by the system doesn't even get to the nub of why Seth Rollins vs The Fiend was so truly abysmal. The rotten flesh at the core of WWE's creative was exposed to the crowd under that horrible red light. Whilst the match was hard to see, Vince McMahon's flaws were not. Why had he called for The Fiend to be put in a title program? Why had he decided to book his babyface champion as a confused and unraveling coward? Why did he not at least commit to Bray Wyatt after he'd committed to the match graphic? Those are the questions that are never formally going to be answered, and so all we can do is make assumptions. Instead of clarity, we're left to muddily speculate if even McMahon himself could have possibly thought that this wouldn't tank. Number 6. Bam Bam Bigelow's Team vs. Four Doinks – Survivor Series 1993 
Vince McMahon was chief play-by-play -play for the 1993 Survivor Series. He sat through this, perhaps the worst excesses in the increasingly childish mid-1990s, from the best seat in the house and attempted to put over the sight of his wrestlers literally slipping on banana peels, getting beaten with balloons going off in their faces, and being piled on by other wrestlers dressed as a baby-faced clown. He even apologetically called it a cartoon on commentary, as if he hadn't booked the goddamn thing. The finishing fall on Bam Bam Big in which men on a mission and the bushwhackers all clamber atop of him is a rather fitting visual for a wacky stack of wretched sports entertainment bullshit. As if to toast the bludgeoning of a once great heel in Doink, the scene manages to bury a tremendous worker in Bigelow and reduce newcomers Mo and Mabel to even bigger punchlines than their monikers suggested. Elsewhere on the show, Brett and Owen fell out in the mid-card and Lex Luger served up the babyface soul survivor in the main event. But the phrase is let me up, not out. It was this sort of crap that had so many casual fans making this very request at the time. Number 5. The Royal Rumble 2015 Is this funny yet, or does it remain the special kind of infuriating that feels a bit like a man of Vince McMahon's age but with worse cuticles scraping the inside of your head with one very long fingernail? It was all of the latter in 2015 when the fan base's least favorite face was booked to be the all-conquering hero of that year's Royal Rumble. McMahon concluded that in order to offset the boos growing louder for Roman Reigns, he had to find his two largest and most weathered heels to be such houses that fans would be desperate for the big dog to be the saviour. What he failed to realise, though, is that fans were able to see through this stupid trick. Show and Kane eliminated known audience favourites Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler and Bray Wyatt as if they were literally taking out the trash, only for Roman to battle back against them and save the day. It fell apart so spectacularly that the last heel standing Rusev was cheered wildly for returning from under the ring as a last gasp villain, and The Rock got booed just for offering his endorsement. Look at his face, he doesn't have a clue what's going on. Number 4. Daniel Bryan vs Sheamus – WrestleMania 27 Pre-Show Daniel Bryan and Sheamus had three WrestleMania matches go to absolute cack in the mid-2000s, but this was the worst of the truly terrible trio. A planned WrestleMania 30 match never happened after Bryan got the spot he deserved as a main eventer, and particularly because CM Punk's January walkout triggered a significant reshuffle, whilst their infamous WrestleMania 28 match only went on for 18 seconds and inadvertently triggered the monosyllabic movement that caused an unthinkable fracture between the WWE and its most loyal fans. By comparison, this WrestleMania 27 pre-show scuffle seems like small potatoes, but just describing it reads like a punchline that only Vince McMahon would piss himself at. Brian and Sheamus work the kickoff for the United States Championship, but the match eventually gets changed to a Battle Royale won by the great bloody Carly. If that doesn't sound like enough of a ginormous botch, their real match on the post-mania Raw is used as a platform to debut Sin Cara, who slips a bit on his grand trampoline entrance. Brilliant. Number 3. The Extreme Elimination Chamber ECW December to Dismember We categorically know that Vince McMahon ruined this, because had it gone the way that Paul Heyman had intended, he wouldn't have left the company as a result. Or, to be clear, he wouldn't have left the company that night. The ECW revival was on its ass before December to Dismember, that is not to be disputed, but one round too many between the on-screen boss and the real one saw Heyman lose his last battle. He'd wanted the undefeated CM Punk to tap reigning champion Big Show early, ensuring a new champion from the remaining five to build the drama before the straight-edge superstar saw it through. McMahon, seemingly to spite him more than anything else, had Rob Van Dam pin Punk first to get him out of the way of the supposed cheers that Bobby Lashley would therefore receive as the lone babyface at the end. And you've read too many list entries on this moment to know how that turned out. Number 2. Daniel Bryan vs Randy Orton – Hell in a Cell 2013 If you think that Randy Orton has had too many matches with Drew McIntyre in 2020, or too many matches with Kofi Kingston in 2019, or too many matches with Jeff Hardy in 2018, or too many matches with Jinder Mahal in 2017, or too many matches with Bray Wyatt in 2016, or too many matches where well, you get the point of this. You'd have shit yourself with rage when it came to 2013. Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, which is not just the sound of WWE's most ardent supporters 
making it very clear exactly who they wanted to see scoop the company's top prize, but of Randy Orton reading his post-Summer Slam schedule out loud. The Viper had struck following Brian's title victory to reveal the authorities' ruse and set up a full series with the company's hottest babyface. But only Vince McMahon seemed to think that the main takeaway from all of this was push Randy Orton. Various half-baked finishes were concocted between the two as the authority storyline exhaustedly rolled on like an absolutely terrible three-hour roar, with this lousy refereeing job by Shawn Michaels being the worst of the bunch. It didn't lead to a Michaels match, nor within the bones of this angle at least a Brian win. Only misery upon misery as McMahon persistently failed to generate the results that he actually wanted, which was again push Randy Orton. And number one, CM Punk vs. John Cena, SummerSlam 2011. There was probably no saving the second summer of Punk when the voice of the voiceless returned just eight days after pledging to leave WWE forever and defeating John Cena at Money in the Bank 2011. An iconoclast that suddenly signs back on to live the sweet life is a pretty tough act to sell, made even tougher when he can't beat the company's top guy without accidental referee's assistance. Their SummerSlam 2011 encounter was supposed to tie up the two title mess made by his brief exit, but instead only muddied Punk's reputation as a guy that maybe couldn't quite practice what he preached. This was an issue that Vince McMahon overlooked when he booked Punk to defeat John Cena due more to referee Triple H's ignorance rather than any sort of ability. The champ placed his foot on the rope, but this was missed by both Punk and the game. Before the show ended, with Kevin Nash returning to batter the new undisputed but WWE champion in another chapter that had no ending, and a deeply unsatisfying middle. Excellent. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 wrestling matches that Vince McMahon ruined. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further about all things to do with wrestling, video games, TV, film, whatever else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about the mistakes that Vince McMahon made. And you know what? You shouldn't punish yourself in real life for mistakes that you've made in the past. Try to forgive yourself. Try to treat yourself with love and respect because you bloody well deserve it, my friends, and we all make mistakes. Don't carry them forward to poison your actions of the future. Try to deal with them, apologize, make amends, do whatever you can to settle the score so that you can move on with a clear head and a clear conscience. Wish nothing but the best for you, my friends. Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.